Welcome everyone. I'm excited to talk to you today about easy activities to do at home with your child. All of these are low to no cost activities that typically can be done using materials you already have in your home. Many of these activities are designed to do with children three and up, but most of them can be modified to do with younger children, but be mindful of any safety concerns for those younger children. Now, creating experiences and activities for your child at home is about spending time together, having fun, and creating bonds. When engaging with your child during these activities, remember, learning is taking place within your interactions before, during, and after the experience. It's about the process, not the product. It doesn't matter if the art is unrecognizable. Spills and messes are part of the learning process. It doesn't matter if you finish your game. Be present, live in the moment, and enjoy the time with your child. That's the most important thing to remember when we're going through this stuff. As Edwards Pleasant and Franklin have shown, young children learn not through academic activities such as paper and pencil tasks or rote memorization, but from parent-child interactions including reading books, having open-ended conversations, singing songs, doing creative art projects, and pretend play. Thus, it is very important to have parents recognize the importance of play and learn to stimulate cognitive development in play scenes. Let's look at some fun activities that you can do at home with your child, starting with art. Now, I wanna let you know that all of these activities that we're going to look at today are in a supporting handout that you have or have access to. It has all of these activities and uh, some additional activities as well too. So let's start by looking at some art activities. <clears throat> Simple activities. Sand art is the first one. So materials you'll need, sidewalk chalk, a small bottle with a lid, some salt, a bowl, and funnels optional. So what you're gonna want to do is first, pour a small amount of salt into the bowl. Then you're gonna take the piece of chalk and you're gonna rub that piece of colored chalk around in the bowl and in that salt until the salt is colored. The chalk will actually color the salt. And then you're gonna pour the colored salt into the bottle, creating a colored le level or layer. And then you'll just repeat with different colors of chalk until the bottle's full and put the cap on it and then you have your sand art. Again, simple activity from things that you probably already have around your house. So let's look at some others. Painting, let's look at painting. Painting doesn't always have to be messy. Sometimes, you know, you didn't think, oh, I don't wanna bring paint into my house, but let's think of some ways that we can make it so that it's not so messy and kind of scaling it down, as you can see in the picture, using Q-tips with the paint, so it's not such a, such a huge mess or getting everywhere. So you could kind of start with that and move forward. Another one is disappearing paint. So I love disappearing paint. So the materials that you'll need, you'll need some cups, water, and clean paint brushes. So give your child a cup with water and that clean paintbrush and have them go outside and paint the sidewalk or other things, and what's great, is it, it because it's water, it just disappears. So it's, it's a non-messy paint, disappearing paint. Now foil sculptures, all you need for foil sculptures is just foil. So give your child a piece of foil or let them choose how much they want to use. They will then twist and mold the foil into shapes that they want um, that they want to make into different structures or different things um, that they can make with it with the foil. And you can always add construction paper to it to add a little color or flair. And you can ask them what they created and write that on the paper as well. So foil sculptures again, very simple. Ceiling drawing. Sometimes it's referred to as Michelangelo painting, but believe me, you don't want to use paint. So the materials that you'll need is large pieces of paper, tape, crayons or markers, and some tables. And so this is a twist on just coloring on the paper on top of the table, 
you're going to take that paper and you're going to tape it to the underside of the table and make sure that there's no sharp edges on the bottom of the table. And then you and your child can lay down or crouch down under the table and color on the paper by laying down and coloring on the paper that's on the bottom of the table. So ceiling drawing. Now when we're thinking about art, there's a lot of different things that you can do with art in your house. And one great thing that you can do is think about creating an art center in your own home. In an art center, all you really need to have are just some of the basics available for them to create art projects with you. So crayons, markers, scrap paper, stickers, glue, safety scissors, depending on their age, scrap materials, Puzzle pieces. Puzzle pieces make great scrap materials because they're great shapes with lots of colors on them. Yarn, craft sticks, ribbon, fabric, anything that else you can think of for a scrap material that they could build and create with for art. So creating a little art studio in your house. Now let's move on and look at some large motor activities. The first one is Recycled City. Now, let me tell you also that all these activities that we're going to go over and all the ones that are in the handout, I've done all those activities in my own home with both of my boys. They're both grown and <clears throat> out of the house now, but when they were younger, I've done all these activities. So you'll see typically my younger son in, uh, in a lot of these pictures, such as this one here. So this is a great one and real simple as well too. All the materials that you need are just recycled materials such as plastic containers, boxes, paper towel rolls, etc. So collect collect those types of materials like yogurt containers, cream cheese containers, cottage cheese containers, and then place all those materials out on the floor for your child to build with. Now to make it more of a city, you can add blocks, people, animals, cars as an extension as they build a city from these recycled materials. And then you can take those recycled materials, put them in a bin, and put them in with all their other toys as well. So additional building materials. The swing ball, materials that you'll need, fabric, yarn, a small ball, like a tennis ball, nothing too heavy. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hang the ball from the ceiling by placing the ball in the cloth, and that's the reason you need the cloth, is because then you're going to tie a string around the top of that cloth, so it gives you something to kind of tie on to. So draw, uh, tie a string around the cloth so the ball is in there, and then you're going to hang it high enough to not hit the floor, but low enough that when it swings down, it can knock things over. And then you can have your child build a structure out of the empty containers that we just talked about or blocks. And then your child can just stand back and they just pull the ball back and they don't throw it. They just let it go and it swings and it knocks down their stuff. So there's a lot of different things going on here as well too. A lot of math concepts happening with this. But again, this is, you can see in the pictures, this is my house and um, I've done it in the classroom where I've hung it from a drop ceiling here. I just put a little nail in the top of the, the, the door frame and you can't even see it and I just hang the string from there and we can you know take it down and put it up as needed. So the swing ball. And then something so easy and it would just you know I know you think about these things but I just want to throw these out there as well too because if you think back to when you were a child and some of the things that you did I'm sure we all built forts. I did. And building forts, a lot of different ways you can you can build forts, having a lot of different materials, you know, lightweight blankets and pillows and, and strings to help, you know, create these. But um, I mean, it can be as simple as draping a sheet over a table. That's how I remember doing it when I was a kid. So simple things to kind of think about as well too. Think back to your childhood on some of the activities and things that you like to do with your family. And then creating with cardboard boxes. There's so much to do with boxes. And as we always say, when the young children open their presents, at, like at Christmas, they have all these toys and all they want to do is, that's right, play with the boxes. So start saving different size boxes, those smaller ones they can do art projects with and the bigger ones they can build with. So thinking about boxes in different ways and saving those for your child, for you and your child, to use together at home. 
the beanbag toss. So materials that you'll need is two small boxes, yarn, and then bean bags or crumpled up paper or rolled up socks. And then what you do is you just cut the bottom out of both of those boxes, and then you attach yarn to hold them together with a little space in between. And then you hang that from the ceiling or from a door frame. And then you have the two different boxes to throw the items into the bean bags or the crumpled paper and having the two boxes there gives some some variety to the skill level there's two different skill levels there so if they throw and they can't make it into the top one they can definitely make it into the bottom one there depending on where you hang it at so um, another simple large motor activity that you can create with things from around the house well, one thing I love to do, and, and I mentioned obstacle courses, and people say, oh, I can't create an obstacle course in my house. Absolutely, you can. The only thing that you need for an obstacle course is masking tape, blank pieces of paper, and markers, and then things around your house. So create an obstacle course using different, different items from around your house that you find, but start by using that masking tape to make a track that they will follow around the house. Have it make sharp turns and zigzags and different, different, go in different directions. Along the track, put down those pieces of paper that you've written it, that you have, that you've written instructions on, such as jump three times, or spin around, or touch your toes four times, or pat your head, or even sing a song. So as they're going along, when they hit the piece of paper, there's a, there's a little activity for them to do. And then along that obstacle course, along that track, put some obstacles such as a table with a sign and an arrow pointing that says, go around. Or a chair that has a piece of paper with an arrow that says, go under. Or an empty box that says, go in, go out. So simple things from around the house. All you need is that masking tape. Don't even need the masking tape and pieces of paper and you can create a simple obstacle course right in your own home. Hide the timer. So materials that you'll need, an egg timer or some item that makes noise. So you know, sometimes it is hard to find those kitchen timers that, that tick, but you want them to find a timer that, that, that makes some noise with the ticking, or since you're just doing it at home with your own child, you could use your cell phone that's playing music. So what you're going to do is have your child close their eyes and then you're going to set that timer so that it starts ticking. And you, and then you will hide the timer somewhere in the room or in the house and then you have your child open their eyes and then what they'll do is they'll tiptoe slowly around the house and they'll be listening to see if they can find the timer by listening for it. So hide the timer using their listening skills. All right, large motor matching. We're talking about large motor activities. So we can take a simple matching game and add some movement to that matching game. So what you can use is paper, crayons, or markers. And then on a sheet of paper, you or your child, have your child draw a simple picture, shape, or an item that they choose. On a second sheet of paper, have the child draw that exact same picture or as close to as possible. And then repeat that until you have a couple different ones. Then just like a matching game, you're gonna shuffle up those pictures and you're gonna place them face down on the floor in rows. And then you can take turns, you and your child can take turns trying to find the matches. But because it's large motor, they and you are getting up and walking around, flipping it over. Nope, it's not that one. Nope, it's not that one. So it adds some movement into your typical matching game. And then here are some um, additional large motor ideas to think about, different sports to play with your child, tag, dancing, field trips, plan field trips to different places, even if it's just walking or, or driving uh, to a nearby park. Some exercise videos, hide and seek, charades, some of the basics. Think about some of those, um, again, those basic activities that you did when you were a child. All right, 
Now let's move on to a couple fun science activities that you can do with your child. Here's one of my favorites. I love this one and it's the, it's the best bubble maker that you can find. You don't need to go buy those little wands at the store. This is all you need for making bubbles. This is a great one. So materials that you'll need are uh, clean, empty pop bottles, rubber bands, dish, dish soap, a bowl, and then pantyhose or cheesecloth and some washcloths work as well too. So what I found works the best, pantyhose. All right, so cut the bottom off the plastic bottle and throw away the bottom piece. Now you're gonna cut a large square of pantyhose or cheesecloth and you're gonna put it over that large opening that you just made at the bottom of the bottle. Then make sure that there's extra that hangs over, okay? Because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the rubber bands and you're gonna slide that over the bottom and over the, the pantyhose, which is the screen that you've made, and that's gonna secure it to the bottle. Then you're gonna make your bubble solution by just mixing some water and some basic dish soap. Dawn seems to be the best, but really any dish soap works good for bubbles. And then dip, and actually the picture here is just generic dish soap that's used in this picture, but then you just dip that, the, the bottom of, of, that, um, of that pop bottle into your um, bubble solution. And then you just put your mouth on the top of the bottle and below and all the bubbles come out. And if you can see in this picture, um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's this thick mass of bubbles that you can see he's even holding it in his hands. So it's really cool. You know, you can do it over a bin or a tray uh, so it's not making a huge mess or of course, take it outside, right? But um, just a great, just a great bubble wand, bubble tool. And Play-Doh. Don't need to go to the store and buy Play-Doh. Make your own Play-Doh. So much learning takes place just in making Play-Doh. We got math and science and, and literacy following the recipe and just the interactions and talking. Um, just, just great stuff going on making your own Play-Doh. And again, this recipe is in the handout. All this stuff is in the, in the handout. Um, so have your children help make make this and all you really need for there's a lot of different types of play-doh out there you can look up um, some really interesting um, ways to make play-doh different types um, but this is the simple simple play-doh recipe it's just two cups of flour half a cup of salt one cup of warm water and you can use food coloring or kool-aid and the kool-aid actually colors it and it adds a, a nice smell to it and then a fourth cup of oil so allow your child to measure and mix the ingredients in the bowl. And then after it's mixed well, you guys will knead the dough, mix it, mix it around with your hands. And if it's a little bit too wet, add a little bit of flour, mix it up, add a little bit more flour if you need to, but don't add too much or it um, will be turned into a, to a rock. So make your own Play-Doh at home. Oobleck. Now, if you've never made the oobleck or heard of the oobleck, it's, it's cornstarch and water. So you just need cornstarch, water, and a large bin. So have your child mix the cornstarch with the water. They can scoop the cornstarch into the bin and use a spray bottle or spoons to wet the cornstarch. So try the different consistencies as you add, add it in. Um, keep playing around with it and see how it feels and just keep adding more water and more water there's no real recipe to it because it's science. So try try and see how it feels at the different consistencies. And even if there's too much water, uh, you just let it settle a little bit and you can pour it right off. Um, so this will keep for a couple of days actually. So, um, and just see how it feels. It's a fun um, sensory experience. All right, let's switch gears again and look at some games. Just some fun, simple games that you can play with your child around the house. I love this one. It's called What's Missing. Materials that you'll need is just a large cup or similar item and some small toys. Not a see-through cup. Can't see through. Um, so what you'll do is you'll line up, start with, you know, four small toys on the table or floor, and then talk about each toy and identify what the toy is. And then you're going to have your child close their eyes. And when they close their eyes, you're going to put the cup over one of the toys. 
And then when the cup's over on the toys, you're going to tell your child, open your eyes, and you're going to ask them what's missing and see if they can identify which toy is missing, which toy is hidden under that cup. So take turns hiding the toys, let them hide the toys. And as time goes on, you can do different things like add more toys or change the toys or try covering two toys and see if they can identify the two toys that are missing. So what's missing? Map quest. What you'll need, paper, crayons, and markers. And this one works, works better with the older children, but have your child hide an item around the room. Have them draw a map of where it is hidden. And then take turns with your child hiding and finding the object. And with the young children, they're going to just draw some marks on, on their paper. And that's OK. That's going to be their map because you'll walk around the room and look at that map and see if you can find it. And of course, they'll probably lead you to it anyway. So really what they draw on there doesn't matter. Again, it's about the interactions and the fun time that you're having with them. So. MapQuest, if anybody remembers the old MapQuest. Color match twister, materials that you'll need. Obviously, a twister game, toys from around the house. And you could use something other than a twister game, but really go to the Salvation Army. There's tons of them there. Everybody buys twister. Nobody keeps twister, so they're all at the Salvation Army. So put out the twister game, fold it in half so there's not so many dots out, right? And then spin the spinner. And whatever color it lands on, your child has to go find a toy that matches that color. And then they bring the toy back and they put it on the twister board on that matching color, on that matching colored circle. And then you can just repeat the game until the, the, the circles are full or for as long as you want to play. And then the way to clean up this game is really simple. You just reverse it. You spin it, lands on yellow, pick something off the twister board that's yellow and go put it away. Bag stories, materials that you'll need, a bag that you can't see through, some small toys such as people, animals, cars, and blocks. And so you'll gather those up and you'll put those in the bag. And then what you'll do is you'll sit down with your child and you'll pull out the toys one at a time. And as you pull out a toy, you'll start making up a story and you'll pull out another toy and you'll make up a you'll continue the story with that item and involve that 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 item into the story. And then switch roles and let your child make up and tell a story as they pull items from the bag. Bingo or matching games. We talked a little bit about matching games. You can make your own matching games. One of the things my younger son really loved to do was make his own matching games. And at the bottom, the bottom picture you can see, he actually drew some body parts and made a made his own matching game. So you know, make your own games. Magazine faces. This is an interesting and fun and funny one that you can have a, a lot of fun with is um, what you'll need is just some scissors, some magazines, masking tape and popsicle sticks or something similar. And then you and your child can cut out different face facial features of people from the magazine. And then you can tape each cutout, each of those cutout parts of the face to a different popsicle stick. You and your child can now hold them up one at a time to your face and make silly faces with these and you can tell different stories and play fun games. So just um, just a just a just a fun activity to do with your child that gets everybody laughing. So there are two things that I want you to keep in mind when playing with your child. First, keep it simple and fun. A good part of all learning comes from interacting and bonding with you, regardless of the activity. Second, show your child that you believe in them and have confidence in, your, in their abilities. Research shows when parents are motivational models for children, they develop positive attitudes that last through their school years. But most importantly, have fun. Thank you guys for joining us today.